Obama's war machine. It's the biggest, the baddest, the bulliest in the history of America, and it appears ready to fire up even hotter. Welcome to Liberty News TV. I'm Norval Rose. Are we about to go to war in Syria? It would certainly seem so. Not a declared war, but an international police action, apparently intended to punish a bad actor on the world stage, and to let everyone know that President Obama means it when he draws a red line. Despite American public opinion that is overwhelmingly against military intervention in Syria, despite strong warnings from Russia and China not to strike, despite the potential for messy entanglements that could plunge us deeper into another prolonged Middle East conflict, Obama's war machine is gearing up. There's serious talk of limited missile strikes into Syria because of the reported use of chemical weapons by the Assad regime. The Pentagon has moved warships into the region within striking distance. So here we have a president who railed relentlessly against George W. Bush for getting us involved in ill-advised, illegitimate wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, a president who's now firing up his own war machine. Of course, we must keep in mind that with his ongoing drone strikes into Pakistan and Yemen, Obama has never really turned the machine off. But the impending Syrian engagement is only the latest battlefront for Barack Obama's perpetual motion war machine. Since entering office, Obama has used conflict, hostility, antagonism, and aggression to embroil America in a constant state of war, to cloud the country's vision and create an atmosphere of uncertainty, uneasiness, and doubt as we deal with a never-ending fog of war. And what are Obama's targets? Let's name just a few. There's his conflict with the states, his war on state sovereignty, unleashing one of his main dogs of war, Attorney General Eric Holder, to go after voter ID laws, most recently in Texas, the war on the integrity of the American electoral process. Related to this, the war on American borders and immigration control, as Obama and his political foot soldiers march for amnesty for illegals. And what about the president's war on coal, on the development of American energy resources in general? Obama's stand against offshore drilling, against fracking, against the Keystone Pipeline project. And those higher energy prices? Part of the war on the middle class. Even as Obama claims to be fighting for us, he's fighting against us on multiple fronts. The war on middle class values, marriage, the traditional family, even a wholesome cultural environment. And what about the environment itself and the war on common sense when it comes to supporting environmental policies that are compatible with economic prosperity? Or the race war that Obama seems so intent on fomenting? The war on individual rights as he forces all Americans into Obamacare. Yes, Obama, the president of choice when it comes to marriage and abortion, offers us no choice when it comes to our individual health care, no path to self-determination. Or when it comes to religious beliefs regarding health care and what any American should or should not have to agree to, support, and pay for, which raises the specter of Obama's war on religion in general and what many see as his war on Christianity in specific. And then there's the big war on the Constitution, on the rule of law, on the separation of powers, on the very belief that our rights, our essential, inalienable, natural rights come from God and not from government. Barack Obama is without a doubt the most ambitious and aggressive wartime president our nation has ever seen. His inexorable war machine has been rolling across the land and over our lives since he first took the oath of office. Because despite the rhetoric and the platitudes about being a healer, a uniter, a man of peace, Obama has proven himself to be a man of war, building on his political past as a professional agitator, a dissident, a troublemaker, a conflict instigator, whose very nature, whose sole purpose is to stir up and then to tear down on his relentless, calculated mission to divide and conquer. And that is Liberty News TV for today. I'm Norval Rose. Thanks so much for watching, and we do hope to see you right back here next time.